from court number five here in New York. We've got women's doubles tennis action and a trip to the quarterfinals on the line as the All-American team of Coco Goff and Katie McNally takes on the third seeded Nicole Melikar and Ifon Chu. Hi everybody, alongside three-time mixed doubles Grand Slam champion Nina Garrison, I'm Steve Mears. First, take a look at the top half of the women's doubles draw as Goff and McNally take on Melikar and Chu. And the beauty of doubles is it moves on quickly. We're right into the quarterfinal and a great matchup for you here today. Zena, what are you most excited about here between these two teams? Um, well, I'm actually, you know, both um, Melikor and Shu are excellent doubles players, and, you know, they make their living basically off of doubles. But to have the two young ones, Katie McNally and also Coco Groff, play um, for a chance in the quarterfinals is exciting. So you see the weather forecast. It continues to cooperate this week. Tiny bit of rain, but today near perfect conditions as we get into the evening as we roll along with this 2020 edition of the U.S. Open here from New York City inside the bubble. And Katie McNally still involved in the singles competition and set to meet Elise Mertens in the third round. Coco Goff was eliminated and lost to Anastasia Sevastova in first round singles action. But this is a team that garnered a lot of attention and enthusiasm last year between Goff and McNally and Zena, two of the brightest young stars <laughs> in American tennis. Yeah, they are. And um, we will actually get a chance to see why they are definitely, you know, they, they are two that are, they play older than what they are. You know, they know the courts. And a lot of times you have younger juniors that don't play a lot of doubles anymore, but the, they actually show you why you should play a lot of doubles. You get to learn so much about the court. There's an American on the other side, 27-year-old Nicole Melikar. We'll take a look at their team with Melikar and Zhu. Title with these two in Adelaide back in January, which seems like it was about 10 years ago, but it was in January. They won a title together. So, Zina, you know, what's the scouting report on these two? Well, um, both of them, like I said, are, are very good doubles players. And uh, Melikar, I think, has been to the finals a couple of times in Grand Slams and I think Wimbledon. And um, she's definitely... You know, she's just as seasoned a doubles player. So, and they team up well together. Yeah, 10 career doubles titles for Yifan Shu. And that championship they won 2020 in Adelaide, which they won together. And there was so much excitement for Katie McNally and Coco Goff last year here at the US Open as a doubles team. So popular, even had still have their own hashtag McCoco <laughs> and just there was so much excitement to watch these two play it really captured the excitement at the open last year and we'll start with Coco Goff you know what do you thought with her overall development not just in doubles but singles as well yeah I think uh, she's coming along well One minute. you know unfortunately we had the um you know the pandemic com coming along and just coming back so I think that she was a little bit rusty coming into this tournament, um, but she is definitely a player that shows you a lot of excitement, um, shows your emotions, how she's feeling, um, and the way she plays. And for Katie McNally? Well, Katie McNally, I'm actually one seconds. of her biggest fans. <laughs> 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 I, I know you say you're somebody of my it's age, but and, and tennis player that I have been um, I just love watching her play I mean she had her court sense is amazing and when I found out that her mom actually you know helped and taught her tennis and everything and that she comes from a tennis background then you can surely understand why she's from Cincinnati Ohio 18 years of age Katie McNally Julie Gently from Norway is going to be the chair umpire here this evening teams trying to punch their ticket to the quarterfinal in the doubles action at the 2020 U.S. Open. I still can't get ready, Steve, for just like, yeah, nobody walking around. <laughs> it has been bizarre, right? We're so used to everything being packed and just such a buzz, especially at Arthur Ashe. 
just sweating trying to get past the people to get to your next quarter. That's right. <laughs> and as I mentioned, the weather has cooperated. It's normally stifling hot, has been at times over the years. But a very pleasant evening for some doubles action. First set of the golf. Nally Goff. They will start us Ready? off. always a stop you never want to start off with doubles yeah I noticed something immediately so they use signs um, can't quite see what the signs are but that's always good to give your sign to your partner Fifteen. well done there by Coco keeping that ball low she was well off the court and back to the person at the net, but kept it very low. And that's why I'm a fan. Or I mean, you it's just don't see you know, young juniors have such good volleys as she does right now. She's very fundamentally sound on the volley. Two double faults. Double. Yeah, two double faults in this game. She was struggling with her serve as well in the singles. Always oh, nice to come back with uh, after a double fault, come back with an ace. McNally. Two double faults. First game. Solid start for Goff and McNally as they hold to begin our match on court five. as we turn our attention to Malakar and Ju, what is going to be important to watch out for here early in this match as far as they're concerned? Well, actually, um, you'll s especially after, they call uh, you know, you want to hold serve. Everybody wants to hold serve. And... Um, yeah. Malakar you know, has a big serve and big ground strokes. Flick over Coco's head, not a very, that's a hard shot actually hit. Coco's not, I think she's six feet, but you're going to have to also watch, you have new school doubles and old school doubles, and the young ones actually play old school doubles. How would you differentiate the two? Coming in, like you saw Katie came in right behind that ball. You'll see both of them at the net a lot more rather than staying one up and one back. Third Taylor. Nice move by Shu. Nicole Melikar, 27 years old. She was born in the Czech Republic, came to the United States at an early age, resides in Stewart, Florida. She 
missed that. What you also notice and look out for is you know your you want your opponent to hit a first serve and the person at the net that should be looking for any opportunities to cross, take that ball out of the air. Nice serve into the body of Coco by Melikar. Melikar, seven career doubles titles. Zhu with ten. Doubles final at Wimbledon 2019. <laughs> Katie did a great job there, noticing that Ju left a little bit too early and hit behind her. Melikar was not able to get it. That's exactly what you're supposed to do is go back down the line, especially early. Nice touch. Okay, Melikar, shoot. Yvonne Ju. One game on, for set. And a hold. For that team, we are at one all. Just underway, second round action. Women's doubles from New York City. Steve Muir, Zena Garrison. Katie McNally to serve. See if Katie stays back or she mixes in. I think she mixes in some serving volley or some coming in from staying back. There she comes. 15 love. You know, Steve, that, that's just like not seen or heard of anymore, people serving in Bali. <laughs> but, the, you know, that, that's the great thing about these two as well. Right move there by Coco. 30 left. Katie hit a good serve into the body, and Coco saw that she had the opportunity to, to cut it off. Racket of golf. Notice Melikar had a just very powerful shot into Coco, kind of keeping her at bay, and then went back at her, and, and Coco was not able to be ready for that ball with the volleys. You have to have quick exchanges in doubles. Nice serving there by. Katie, when you're playing doubles especially, you want to get a high percentage of first serves and put the pressure on the person that's receiving. And also allow the person at the net working to work with you. Game. Solid work Goff on serve McNally. again for Goff, Goff McNally and Lee. McNally. Two games to one for seven. Seven for seven. Uh, points one on the first serve. One. I know you follow it very closely. Just your thoughts on the state of the game 
on the women's side in the United States when you look at some of these young phenoms that are here in New York? Well, I, I think that we're definitely in, in the process of hopefully changing somewhat of a, a little bit of a guard. I think these younger players, they're hungry. They want it. Um, it's just I just don't think that it's as easy to move up in the rankings as it was back in my day. Um, you know, there's so many tough competitors. And so I think we're, you know, in a good place right now. These are two of the 11 teenagers in the main draw at the start, single side. Oh, wow. Coco just blasted that Fifteen. by. Melikar did not even see the ball, was blasted by her before she even realized what happened. She did a great, once again, you know, you have a situation with someone like Coco that's you know, got a lot of arms and a lot of things going on. Sometimes the best shot is just to go right at her. Good Four job by Melikar closing in on that net. Just amazed how close these young women get. They're, they're you know, their nose are on top of that net sometimes. Yeah. There is some fearlessness. Yeah. More good net play from Coco Goff. Helicar did not do enough with that volley. Coco actually was able to just put it back to the other side got to be also prepared and willing to stay up there but you got to be ready good work by Melikar okay. fighting that one off again right on top of the net two games sold for set and we're two all here in the first set Second round action, women's doubles in New York City. I mentioned those 11 teenagers in the women's main singles draw, seven of them American. We're not even talking about Ann Lee, who's <laughs> 20 years old. Sophia Kennan's 21. Watch Jen Brady advance in her mid-20s. She won earlier today. Is there any positive out of this pandemic is here at the U.S. Open, we've been able to have a couple more American players. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Robin Montgomery, the youngest player who participated in the main draw. She's 15 years old. She had a first round match. So the future very bright in the U.S. Good move there 15. by Malikar. Noticing that Katie had to run back. Just put that ball right back at her feet on the baseline. Coco using her wide serve there to pull Malikar off of the court. Just getting a little bit of extra slice on that ball, making it tail away from her. Just can't get that one to Thank land. You. Good little drop, like angle by Zhu, bringing Coco in. I don't understand why Coco was so far back in the first place. Not many things that she could have done on you could have done on that situation. Once again, that wide serve working for Coco. 
creating an error. Malachi's forehead. Again, on the flank. Game, Goff McNally. Like Coco Goff. Goff McNally lead, three games to two. A hold for set. them. They've got a 3 2 lead in our first set from four five. Malachi will be looking to hold here. A lot of first serves. Let me tell you, doubles partner um, that's at the net, what serve you might like to play. A lot of times, you know, I like to be controlled by the player that was at the net to tell me where to possibly serve because they could pick it up sometimes when I could not pick up things. You don't have to pick up anything. You serve like that. Yeah. <laughs> be pretty easy. This trend continues on serve here in our first set. It's pretty amazing. Jew is still standing kind of in the middle of the court. That's a great move there by Katie McNally. It was set up by that beautiful down the line backhand of Coco. Katie realized, and just kind of came to the middle of the cut court and cut it off. Great move. Thirty fifteen. got to the doubles final at the Western Southern Open last week here in New York. Got some of those signals. Serve I wonder him. if that was forehand I stay or <laughs> she missed the serve so we couldn't get a good read on it. block there Third by Katie. Had a strong serve coming into her backhand. She just blocked it to the other side. And that's our first break points. Yes. And also, the other thing that you'll notice, Steve, is they'll serve a lot of balls into the body. And the reason why they do that is so you cut down on the angle on the returner. You give them only a couple options to go. Oh, 
Oh, Coco did good to get that ball back. What an exchange. Ju tried to hit it at her feet and put it away, but was not able to. Coco did a great job of hanging in there, getting that ball back. Now a second break point. Coco and Katie. Goff McNally. Are able to convert on the break. They have a 4 2 Goff lead McNally in the first set. Four games to two per set. That's what I was saying earlier. These two, they play kind of old school doubles. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, what is it? The co what are the skills that. Well, basically playing. The team? Uh, making more of your shots one at the net, uh, taking the net away from you. That's the biggest difference. Complement each other so well. Wow, what a shot. Outstanding. And that's another thing. That shot right there lets me know that she's played a lot of doubles. She was off the court and just pushed it back down the line, giving herself another opportunity, but didn't need it. Katie and Coco, they're good friends as well. And how nice is it to have a consistent doubles partner? Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Um, actually, I only play with a couple people um, in doubles, but it, it, for doubles for me, I need you need to be my friend. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to be out there with no one that, you know, was not my friend. I don't blame you. <laughs> Taking advantage of that second serve, Malachi. Point. 15, 14. Did a, I mean, Katie did a great job of hitting that ball right off the line, but you picked it up. But Melika was always, that net person has to be ready for anything up there, and she was. Break point, Melikar and Ju. Yeah. They got it. Melikar, Ju. They were Ball break. Well, they McNally, were broken. Four games to three. Stay percent. very close. On serve, first set, second round. Doubles action, Melikar and Ju against Goff and McNally. You will be looking to exchange and reverse here. Getting a lot of first serves, and Melika will be looking to Fine. pick off anything that's in the air. Or that she might have a, a chance to cross and put the, her opponents in a disadvantage. Keep on Chu, double 
ranking of number eight. Has been as high as number seven in doubles. That was back in January. Law 15. Steve, that's another thing I've noticed since coming back off out of being in this whole, you know, the, um, what I call the reset of the, you know, in the midst of the quarantine and everything, a lot of double faults, especially yes. in the beginning. Saw a lot last week, especially well, Western Southern Open, a lot of players just getting back, trying to get back into that game competition, which obviously you can't replicate when you're practicing. Yeah, you can't bring in stress. <laughs> no. You know, and and uh, when I say stress, it's good stress. You need that to move to the next levels. Katie McNally was able to play with her brother during the shutdown. She goes to Ohio State. that ball over, bringing Katie forward. Katie was not able to control that short ball. Third field. It's so funny, Zoo's not very tall. She's the shortest one out there. But she really packs a nice little punch on her volleys, on her return, and also on her serve. She's five foot five, 32 years of age, 10 career doubles titles. Doubles final at Wimbledon 2019. She missed that. Miller car. Yeah, she did. And another break point chance for Goff McNally. Serve, keeping Coco back on the return. Ball actually slid off the line. Melikar. Melikar did a great job of noticing that ball was high and just caught it out the air, putting it back down the middle of the court. And again, okay. Melikar. Melikar, shoot. Four right games. There on top of the net. First set. Press up hold. Keep it four all now in the first set. It's a good thing about doubles is you have an opportunity to come back. You have to take advantage of those break points. She enough. really went after that one. Definitely.
it's important for Coco to get a lot of first serves in so she can get Katie into the action. Good first serve there. Okay, Another good first serve by Coco. Now it's seventy five percent on the points one on their first serve. Off to the line again. Forty fifteen. Coco just has a tendency sometimes to bring her head down a little bit too fast, especially on the second serve. For you players out there, you got to make sure you stay up. Go up to the ball, even especially on your second serve. What a uh, point. <laughs> you heard a little bit of the communication there, but the response from Melikar and Ju. Ju did a great job of hitting a nice little angle here. Coco runs up, but Ju just keeps that racket. And notice how Melikar and Ju switched over. One switched to the to the doubles alley, and the other to the to the middle of the court. Follow your follow the ball. That was a Coco Golf. Golf. <laughs> she is fired up. A little racket tap for a teammate, Katie McNally. Golf McNally lead. And a hold Five for those two. 5 4 in the first. Look at the centralized area just outside Arthur Ashe Stadium. It's been a hub of activity. You can see some mini golf, some other games, TV set, lounge chairs. You can just sit back and watch tennis all afternoon and clear skies here today as we roll along in the first week, this first week coming to a close. And it's been a lot of fun in New York, both on the singles and doubles front. You know, how about the accommodations, the players? I'm, they have everything they can want here, right? I'm like, you know, I, I, I've been giving kudos to the USTA all morning. Um, they have done an excellent job. I mean, the players have won it for nothing. You know, it's a little inconvenient to have to take tests every couple of days. But, you know, as far as the tournament is concerned, and even for us, I mean, we've been treated extremely well here, and this tournament has been put together very well. Joanna Conta, she said it was like, kind of like being on a cruise ship. You, you just can't get off the boat, but you have everything you could want here. That's a good way to put it. I would say so. Stacy Allister should be extremely happy and proud that, you know, she's done an excellent job. And I'm absolutely loving those USTA commercials, just the commercials that have been done. Yes.
serve there around Malachi. He kicked it out wide to Coco's back end. at the right position at the right time, noticing that was going to have a little problem with that 30, ball 15. as she crossed over, hit a beautiful drop volley back in angle. These two teams did meet last week at the Western Southern Open, a round of 16. It was won by Malakar and Zhu. And that's the final. And Zhu again. 40-15. Nice angle, nice touch. Ju actually reads the ball extremely well, realized that Coco was going to have a little problem getting that ball back cross court and covered the line extremely well. <laughs> and another game. service Manicar, game. Shoot. Handled quite Five smoothly. By Nicole Melikar and Yifan Shu, five all. <laughs> I think they were really excited about that game. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, still are. It goes back to what we were talking about: having a partner you can trust and <laughs> having fun out there. Nice there by Katie. Move by Katie following Perfect. up, noticing the short return. She came in behind it. You don't always have to serve in volley every time, but you also have to be aware if you put in a good serve, be willing to move forward. really controlling that point there. Indeed. Drilling it very hard at Coco, looking for the short ball, just over Coco's head just a little bit, and she just drills it to the other side. That's an experienced doubles play right there. Benefits, I guess, of having 14, a limited 15. crowd. No fans here, of course. But I like being able to hear the communication and seeing you know, how important is that for a doubles team. Oh, it's all about communication, being able to commu communicate with your partner, knowing what they might do. But as you, if you play long enough as these two, you start to know kind of things that they hit at certain points, and the communication becomes just instant. 40, 30. Katie get the job done, take a 6-5 lead in the first. That's 
a beautiful picture of New York that we have not seen. <laughs> we have not been in Manhattan. No, we have not, but it's great to be anywhere. I guess we are in New York, we're just not in Manhattan. Yeah, that's, we're in Queens, <laughs> in the bubble. But a gorgeous night, hardly any clouds in the sky. It is incredible, you think about what this city has been through last five months to have this event. Remember, the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center was used to the makeshift hospital during the pandemic. The minute they said that, I was like, there's no way that the U.S. Open is going on. And like you said, it's been amazing with the, the transformation and what they've been able to do. And just the city within itself, wow. how it's made a huge comeback. Start again for Malakar and two. Malakar does a great job of recognizing when the player in the baseline might be in trouble, and she always crosses or poaches. Third hello. Good for Sir Haju. Malakar just at the net, doing what she's supposed to do, help helping out her partner, looking for anything that she might be able to intercept. Resistance. Six games so first set to the tiebreak. That was a picture perfect service game for Ju. Malakar really helping her out at the net. And on to a tiebreaker in the first set. Tracked it down, but answered Man by Ju. Shoot. Uh, she ran her, her little heart out, but got it, kept it too high. She was able to put it away for an angle. Winner here. miss. Ju left so early, the line was wide open. The girl was not able to handle it and get into the bottom of the net. She gave that bracket a beating. <laughs> yes, she did. And the first set tie break. Love for Melikar Ju. Forehand by Katie. Two all. Tremendous on the forehand. It's two all. 
Nice to see Katie just generating, getting that little bit of spot that was available on the other side. She really whacked that forehand cross court. did a great yeah. job of just staying on her feet there. Made the volley, had to come back from the lob, and Malachi missed the ball on top of the net. Now Malachar and Zhu will be serving. Three straight points for Goff McNally. Coco would like to take that back. She tried to go at Malakar, but Malakar had not left. So we'll switch things up at three all in the tie break. It's been a lot of fun. Very close between these two teams as we expected. Definitely was last week the Western Southern Open. 6-3, 3-6, 6-10. Malakar and Zhu got the win. Both of these are seasoned veterans when it comes to doubles. They've played a lot of doubles. It's evident, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You see it with both teams. Sounds funny saying seasoned veterans with the young ones, but. <laughs> <laughs> Considering it's a 16 year old there and an 18 year old in McNally. First serve in, Melikar getting rid of that forehand volley, just making sure that she made it. She bounced it over the other side of the net. Now it's Goff who will serve. Malakar. Malakar's almost picked it up. That was closer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but it is for all. Is a double fault anytime timely? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. That's four now in the match for Goff McNally. Used to irritate me, just double fault, period. Didn't matter when it was. Six, four. I know that Coco was not almost like not ready for that ball. She had to retrieve and try to hit a lob. Up with his back and forth first set and tie break. That's set points for Melikar Zhu. Entertaining and very close, but a first set victory for Nicole Melikar and Ifan Zhu. 7 6 here in women's doubles action from New York.
Well, Zena, what do you make of what we've seen so far? What do you see there as far as the stats are concerned? Well, I think the first thing is that I look for is the first serves run. That was a 76% first serves run. And, um, you know, double faults. Um, Raff and McNally for a piece to Melikar two and two. Another great look here in New York City as the first week of the 2020 U.S. Open is headed toward a close. Weekend right around the corner. Yeah, can you believe it's like Labor Day weekend? I know. <laughs> I mean, we're at the Open, Labor Day weekend. I mean, come on, where are the people? <laughs> yeah, I mentioned that uh, title in Adelaide in January. <laughs> Does that not feel like it was <laughs> eight, ten years ago. <laughs> into September, and into what is a gorgeous night in New York. Steve Mears, Zena Garrison with you. It's court five, and there is somewhat of a crowd. Of course, it's coaches, staff, maybe some fellow players, no fans. I mean, how huge is it for the staff being able to watch? Oh. <laughs> I mean, like a dream come how about, true. How about the broadcaster <laughs> like That's myself? It. I'm going around <laughs> as a, just a fan and enjoying it. Awesome. Pick a seat, stretch out. That's what I was doing yesterday. <laughs> right there at the center court for Francis Tiafo and John Millman. Good, good first strike there by Katie off the return, setting it up for Coco to be able to put her away. The volley. They have to regroup here, see if they can get an early break. Whoa! And Jew <laughs> fights that Thank off. You. Jew, that was simply double specialist shot there. The ball came into her, and she just blocked it for an angle. Unretrievable for sure. So, Zena, when you're dealing people. with a, a rocket like that right to the body, you, what are you trying to do? How do you fight that off properly? Well, they also probably just, just change your positioning just a slight tad bit from maybe what you've done before just to see if you can throw them off a little bit but or and also just pick a shot just decide what side you're going to hit it on and just go for it but you got to first try to get out of the way of it Great shot there. Back down that line. caught that ball on the rise before it got up someone has a spin serve you want to try to catch it as it's going up, you want to catch it on the rise. game of the second set. We finish. Coco Goff shuffles that one off the line. What a backhand down the line by Coco. Well, that's the break that you had mentioned. Trying to shake off the first set loss. And they're able to find it. doubles title here at the U.S. Open. Start. Great 
slice serve out wide to Malakar from Coco. That lost a set together until they ran into the combination of Azarenka and Barty in the third round of the doubles last year in New York. about that head coming down a little bit too fast on her second serve. Needs to stay up with it. Coco's forehand. Coco was actually a little flat foot. Double faults in the match for McNally and Goff. Two break point chances for Malakar and Ju. Another one. Uh, that's not what you want to do. All, second set. Get the break and then you come back. You got to reset here. Struggles on serve for Coco Goff. One all in the second set. there by Melikar controlling the point seeing that Coco and McNally were in trouble. She really took over here down at Coco's feet. Coco couldn't do anything but just get it back. Serve there by Ju. Ju doesn't look like she has Fortuna. a very powerful serve, but what she does is she places it well. That was right to the tee. Seven miles an hour. Good return, better return Fortuna. there by Coco. You continue to impress. Two on games. Serve two one. two one. Second set and by one set to one. You've got the lead.
It's women's doubles action, court five. In the 2020 U.S. Open, Nicole Melikar and Ipan Shu up 2-1 against Coco Goff and Katie McNally in the second set. Melikar and Shu took on the team of Flipkins and Van Utvenk in the first round, 1-6-4, 7-6. Points percentage one on the first serve in that match, 78%. What a lob on Malakar. Just sensing that Coco was just a little too close to that net and just gave it a nice little flick over her head. took on the team of Baptiste and Osigwe in the first round, 1-7-5-6-1. Left, second. Trip to the quarterfinals on the line with this match. Nice deep serve there, second serve. Getting up the line, you was not able to to get it back. Katie's already had a lot of play this this tournament, this today as well. Third <laughs> serving there by Katie. And singles beat Alexandrova second round, Kuzmova in the first round. 18 years old, Katie McNally. Goff, 16 years of age. Good serve oh, by Katie. And also, when you know you have someone at the net that can help you out, you know, it's really important to just try to get those first serves in, get them nice and deep. That's why it's called doubles, being able to help each other out. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> I actually don't know what happened there. I think um, Coco just misjudged it. Ball went right through them. She just didn't see it. Has two swinging rackets. <laughs> Goff and McNally. They're able to make it to all. It's a nice hole by Katie there. Be sure to download the US Open app to cheer on your favorite players, track the latest scores, stats, match highlights, player news, and more. Available at the App Store and Google Play Store. the one hour mark here in our doubles match. Oh. Nice placement. That was a great return there by Katie. Just getting by everybody. That ball just kind of took off. just wasn't quite able to. Ju is doing a great job of making her, the returner, pay attention to her. And that showed where Coco took her eye off of the ball. Once again, that body serve is excellent to use in doubles, especially using it singles too as well, but in doubles, when you have that person at the net and you serve me into the body, it 
decreases the chances of where they can go. Drew fights off another one at the okay. net. Katie's going to want that one back. Of Goff and a relatively quick hold for Melikar and Ju. Three games to two. Second set. Take a and three by one two lead in our second set from New York. Goff getting ready. She and McNally will be the team serving. Down 2-3 in the second Five. set. So Zena, if you had to construct the perfect doubles team, what are the attributes that you'd want to see? Um, two good servers. You don't have to be great servers, being able to place it. And um, a, um, a volleyer, but also be able to, one good returner. Like if one that you can count on and um, on break points, you know, being able to get that ball in no matter what. Good serve there by Coco. I asked that because I was looking at the scouting report for Melikar and Chu. Melikar described herself as having an aggressive style strong on the serve and forehand. You said more creativity, shot selection, <laughs> reading the play. And that's exactly the way they play. That's, yeah. that's a good description for the two of them. And you could pretty much say that for Coco and Mc, uh, McNally, you know, one's creative and one's more, you know, stable, so. Game, buff, McNally. One, two, punch. Three games, Melikar Melikar could do there. Very quick hold. Three all. And also that holds very true to normally personality, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I was the more laid back one, but I would play with someone sometimes, that, you know, more aggressive, you know, so it's kind of putting them together. Not just tennis skills. Just enough with her serve to keep you off balance. It's a nice little spin serve. Kind of kept tailing off to the left side of McNally. Pretty close. Chase review. breaks at the start of the set. Wow, 
Got a forehand right through. 15, done from Nicole Malakar. Malakar is doing a great job of just hovering over that net. And anything that looks like she can put a racket on it, she's putting a racket on it and putting it away. Again, Malakar okay, with authority. <laughs> that has, that's like the most frustrating thing when you have someone that's just all over the net. Everywhere you try to go, she's right there. But you also have to give credit to to her ser her partner for serving so well. Serves right. and she double plays. <laughs> Zhu is like, don't talk about my serve. <laughs> Haven't been as many for Melikar and Zhu. Fourth of the match. Goff McNally with seven. It's actually the first one Melikar has missed was just a little too close to the net. She didn't have anywhere to go. That gives an add to Coco and Katie McNally. That's a turning point in the match. We're at three all. Whoa. Yes. Alicar. That was an unbelievable get that Katie McNally made, but Melikar, I mean, right here, I don't know how Katie got that ball, but Melikar just put it right, dropped it right in front of her. over Coco's head, which leads me to believe she's just not quite on the ball. The work of Nicole Melikar at the net. Four games to three in second in set, and my one set to one. Giving her team a 4 3 lead. It's very interesting. They're both downing bananas. <laughs> Got to get that potassium, <laughs> yes. What would you go to in your playing days? Well, actually, I can really eat on the court. It would make me feel sick. So okay. I've always had a very nervous stomach. So for me, that was, you know, and especially not a banana. But I just found it interesting that they both were doing it together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's teamwork. It's not particularly hot like we've seen in years past, but it is warm out there, fairly humid week. They wanted to stay hydrated and to go to the chair, regroup. Now Goff Fine. McNally serving. Trailing 3-4, second set. 
good serve once again. The body looks look. for everyone, especially in doubles. And you know the thing about the body serve, you have to practice it as well. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to serve the body and come in. It's something you should do with the, when you're practicing your serve. You said work singles too, right? Yes. Speaking of some of those skills, future so bright for this duo. How does the doubles competition help develop your singles game? Well, for, for one thing is you get to learn different angles that you wouldn't normally see, um, but it also, you get a chance to work on your serve, work on placement, you get to work on returns, things that will help you in singles. Coco and Graf on that one. They were, did not, I mean, Coco and McNally, excuse me, they did not put the, those balls away. Got also, they need to really work on putting those shots away when they have those high volleys or overheads. Okay. Love hold for Goff McNally. Four games, so second set gone back and forth now four all and it's been very close <laughs> which is what we expected coming into the match two teams that have had success doubles before very familiar teams familiar with one another both have won titles two of them for mcnally goff luxembourg and in washington last year to help your partner out if she gets you that 15 love you gotta at least make the return to put the pressure back on the server you don't want to give that ball just give it up putting it in the net you know, at least make them play on it good serving there right there Oh, deep and accurate, <laughs> okay, Katie McNally. I think Drew thought that ball was going to go wide, but it dipped in at the last moment. from Goff. Very Oops. timely. She missed a couple early on, but the good thing is she kept, she keeps going for it. It's the right time to hit that down the line. Great work. Advantage, golf. Nice forehand by Katie. See if Coco can 
convert this. Really needs to get a return in. I'll just give it to them. Yes. And she's frustrated, and she should be. You get that much racket on the ball, you've got to make it because it's just up and over. <laughs> you know, don't keep making the same error over and over. Break point eliminated by Melikar and Ju. That one go by, Advantage. well past the baseline. Good job by Zhu, making sure she keeps it in play. Coco just kind of overhit it. A second break point. Okay, does a great job there yes. again, getting that first serve in. That's exactly why you don't want to let the server start getting a rhythm. That's why when you have the opportunity, you've got to put the pressure back on them. Last one at 94 miles per hour. Two break points saved. Back to Deuce. Anyway, Malakar and, and Ju did a Sutton great there. job of just hanging in there, keeping the pressure on. Malakar served extremely well. That was not an easy hold. No. Two break points saved, but Malakar and Ju get the job done, take a 5-4 lead in the second set, doubles action. Well, as expected, this has been a lot of fun with Goff McNally against Melikar and Ju. Second set and exchange breaks. Fine. You know, just gone back and forth on serve. Coco Goff will be serving with Melikar and Ju leading 5-4, second set. Good start. Good 
serve out wide. She actually hits that serve extremely well. Really gets on the outside of the ball. Let's it tail off. She is not going to be happy with all these double faults. Up eight in the match, four in the set. Ah. And responds just like that. Malachi, actually, if I was her, I would have moved over knowing that she's hit that serve quite a bit. Good serve. Or Got another double. This has to be so frustrating. But the good thing is she's young. She's got to learn from these, you know, situations. But okay. they're able to Five sneak out seven. of that. Despite the doubles, they are able to even the score. Five all. You know, what would you do to get your composure? Things maybe like the surf weren't going so well for you. Well, I think it's, it's, it's in her head right now because it was happening to her in single. So once you start, you know, coming down with a lot of double faults and pressure, it's going to have to be something that's worked on off once she gets out of this tournament. But right now she's just got to go with what she knows and, and stop focusing in on so, so much of it. You can't get frustrated with it. Good pick oh. up by Katie. She has the softest Lucky hands. And it looks like it's going to be a difficult shot. She's able to come up with some unbelievable half volleys. So great cover by Malachi on Good that game. one. Covered the line. Notice Ju actually took Coco all the way off the court. And McLaren did the right job of covering that line. You have to follow the ball. We're 15 all and five all in the second set. What an exchange. Yeah. Ju on the run left the picture. <laughs> Ju did a great Perfect. job of tracking that ball down. Coco's just not putting the ball away, just not seeing it. But one person on that Clay McLaren is definitely seeing it. <laughs> seeing definitely. It well. Thank you. 
And Goff finds a way. That was a great stretch by Goff, noticing that that ball was gonna be an angle short. Ran over there and hit a beautiful backhand angle back at you. Great exchange. Once again, I'm like kind of like laughing because McLaren is all over the net. And that's frustrating when you're a player, especially right now. She's in Coco's head. Everywhere Coco tries to hit the ball, McLaren's right there. They take a 6-5 lead. And now a game away from advancing to the quarterfinal here at the 2020 U.S. Open. Five for the team Melikar and Zhu against Goff and McNally in our second set. Goff and McNally will serve Fine. to stay in it. But it has been a tightly contested affair, and the score indicates that. 7 6 6 5. that point Coco still just not putting the ball away but they were able to get away with that point doesn't quite work for Goff. Drew did a good job of just slamming that ball back down at Coco. Wasn't able to make it over the net. A little bit of, a little jammed. really just taken over the court. She's been the best player on the court all night long. Nicole Melikar, 27 years old, resides in Florida, born in the Czech Republic, representing Team USA, and Yifan Xu representing China, 32 years of age. Third field. live on all the calls here in these outer courts. Hear the pre-recorded voice making those calls. Set. We 
He'd be looking at another tie break. Off at the net with the finish. Six games second set. Standing service game. We are at six all once again. Zina, you got to appreciate the the quality of doubles that we're seeing here tonight. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's it really is just a little bit more experienced than than the other, but I got to hand it to Graffin and McNally are staying in there. Good pick up there by Katie. Very important right now for Coco to get some first serves in there and then allow Katie to help her out a little bit. Got her opportunity, wasn't able to one handle all. it. Second set tie break, now one all. Was Katie just getting a little, little bit tired, you know, playing three sets coming into this doubles, and she's been a, the one that's been on, out on the court the lot more, and just right there, it just didn't seem as quick as she normally is. Got to suck it up, though. That's a lot of tennis for some of these players involved in doubles and still active in the singles competition. And the angle on Malakar. Malakar, that didn't feel good. Malakar did a great job of just following that ball and when she had the opportunity to hit the backhand angle. So they take a 3-1 lead. Did it again. 4-1, Malakar You know, Steve. Malachar's like a little gnat. She's <laughs> <Just laughs> like everywhere, okay? She's one of those you want to say, just go away. I can't think of a better compliment. <laughs> <laughs> she has been outstanding. Perfect placement. 5-1, Melikar, shoot. They take a commanding 5-1 lead. Continue to roll on this tie break. A whole bunch of match points for Nicole Melikar and Yvonne Shu. Trying to punch their ticket to the next round. Well, 
Coco Goff, what say two. about it? Melly Carr, shoot. Game, that is it. By two sets the to doubles seven, chemistry six, on seven, display. Six. What a performance. Nicole Melikar, Yifan Shu advancing at the U.S. Open. Yes. Well, Zena, what did you think of the performance, not just of Melikar, but Zhu as well, and the two of them as a team here tonight? Yeah, Melikar and Zhu look absolutely you know, they look in sync as a team. Even, you know, I made the joke about the bananas, but eating the bananas together, they work really well together. They served at a high, um, There they go. Coco Goff and Katie McNally. But clearly the future very bright for those two players as we highlight it. And the state of tennis with the women's game in the United States. There's a tremendous future ahead for both Katie McNally and Coco Goff. And for Chu and Melikar, on to the quarterfinal. Yeah, they'll be very happy to get through this, that one and, and to move on. This was not easy, was it? Two tie breaks. Yeah, they, they, you know what? They also, they know each other, so they knew that this was going to be a tough one. And, you know, um, I think the double faults that Coco came up with at the wrong time, where there's never really a right time, did not help. Because um, these two just kept the pressure on just all the time. That was nine double faults for Goff and McNally. Just went back and forth in that second set after they exchanged breaks. And then the tie break just dominated by that team right there of Melikar and Shu. They've got a lot of experience. 17 doubles titles between the two, including one together at Adelaide. So in addition to the double faults there, Zena, what else did you notice here when you break down the stats of the match? Well, for first percentage um, serves from play 70% by the Malakai and the Zhu team, you know, anytime you're getting that many first serves, and, you know, and it's interesting, 33, both of them had 33 winners, <laughs> which was interesting. But once again, Malakai was the MVP of that, of this whole doubles teams. Definitely the top player out there on the court. See, they will move on and await their opponent in the quarterfinals, already into the quarters of the women's doubles competition. So, Zena, what do you think about the chances of winning this whole thing? based on what you've seen here today. Yeah, well, they play really well, but, you know, there's, there's some very good doubles teams in here. And, uh, you know, way to go. Uh, Muhammad and Townsend won today, you know, 6-0 in the third set. But um, so in doubles, you need two sets, and then you got the tiebreaker, and the third, anything can happen. It really was fun to watch, the chemistry between the two and some of the skills that were on display between Nicole Melikar and Yifan Shu. We will definitely be keeping an eye on their progression through this 2020 U.S. Open. And Zena, this was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. No, oh, thanks. Thanks for for being your first time doing doubles. Yes. You were very good, very oh, good. Oh, well, <laughs> what happens when you have a great partner? Uh, it was an honor working with you and uh, coming to an end here on this night in New York City from the 2020 U.S. Open here in doubles competition. Nicole Melikar, Yifan Shu advance to the quarterfinals. Thanks.